am back with another YouTube tutorial and today we're going to be doing some extra long nails and this nail set I'm about to show y'all is currently going viral on my page. I think I posted this set about four times and three out of four of those times the post went viral. So of course I wanted to show you guys how I did this. I do have a similar video on my page which I will link down below but as I give you guys this tutorial I did want to go over some very important nail tech advice so y'all stick around to hear what i'm gonna talk about i am currently removing the shine off of my client's nails and afterwards i am gonna go in with this cuticle bit and further push back the dead skin now that that is all finished i am going in with this cuticle bit and i do currently have it in reverse i do like to go both ways if needed and i'm pushing the skin back as far as possible so that i can start to nip it very easily so i did do a close-up right here so that you guys could see that i did kind of push the skin down before i started to nip it and this is in real time right here i wanted you guys to see the speed I was doing this at, I'm really not going too fast. You do want to be careful with doing this because nipping your client, of course, is going to set back the appointment. So this was actually for my client's birthday. My homegirl was taking a trip, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure she was taking a trip. So she wanted to go extra long. She wanted some bling. And the Mrs. Pearl set is the perfect set because it's not too extra, but it's also not too simple. So right now, I am starting to blend the natural nail in with the nail tip. And these nail tips are some no C-curve coffin nail tips. So these are pre-shaped. And I love me some pre-shaped nail tips because I could just put them on, blend them in, and start the application without wasting any more time. I definitely recommend getting some pre-shaped nail tips, but I do have videos on my page where I do shape different nail tips starting from square. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave a few of those videos down below as well. Like I said earlier, we don't have to shape these nail tips, but I do want to make sure that the side walls of the nails are snugged to the natural nail. So I am going to go in with my 180 grit file and lightly make sure that I'm shaping the side walls that's actually on the nail plate. I do not need the nail tip to be sticking out on the side when I start to lay the acrylic. Moving on, I am about to start to prep the nail. I am going to leave everything I use for prep down below. I did get everything off of Amazon, and this does include the Young Nails Protein Bond and a No Lift Primer. But I am ready to jump into some nail tech advice. So recently, I seen a nail tech make a post, and she was listing her advice that she has to beginner nail techs. And the first one really stood out to me, and she said that she didn't believe that you should follow a lot of other nail techs when you start and when people was asking her why did she feel this way she was saying that you could get discouraged etc etc which I guess I do understand that but look if you're a beginner and when you look at other people's work if you instantly get discouraged that's something that you need to fix you should be able to look at somebody else's work know they're you know possibly better than you and tell yourself like this is where I want to get this is the point where I want to be at and I'm going to continue to practice and push myself until I get to this point. You should not be looking at other people work like, oh, I suck. I'm going to unfollow her. Like that just didn't make sense to me. And the people in the comments kept asking, like, why do you feel that way? And, you know, I'm not trying to discredit her. Like if she feels like this is, you know, good and genuine advice that's on her. That's cool. I'm not knocking anybody's advice down. But what I'm saying is. You need to be following other nail techs to get inspired, to get inspiration, to see other people's nail journeys. I'm always posting about my nail journey and I post this to motivate other people so that people could see where I started and see where I got and know that you could do the same thing. So in my opinion, you definitely want to follow other nail techs. You need to get inspired. You need to see what other people are doing. You need to be trying new trends and you need to be watching tutorials. This is going to be the fastest way you improve your work. 
So that's what I got to say about that. But to talk about the nails really quickly, I am using a size 14 brush. And for these nails, of course, we are using Valentino's Bad and Bougie. I'm sorry, this color has been eaten up. My clients consistently pick this color, so unfortunately, I have to consistently tell you guys about it. I did just apply a very small bead of clear acrylic to the natural nail before I start to add the acrylic powder. And I like to do this because I feel like it protects the primer as I'm working. And also, this really does help me with lifting. So for the first bead, since this is a much longer nail i did grab a larger bead and i'm currently using the body of my brush to get the acrylic as smooth as possible i like to make sure i am minimizing the amount of work i have to do so if i make sure that the nail is smooth now i later won't have to file too much so you do want to make sure that the side walls are nice and snug to the nail tip without too much of the nail tip showing at the bottom because you will have to file that off later For my next bead, this bead was a little smaller. I did place this bead directly on top of where I placed the previous one. And you guys seen that I made sure that all of the acrylic was on top of the nail before I started to blend this down. You don't wanna be trying to work with runny acrylic powder. And if you feel like your application is a little thin and a little runny, you probably need to work on your bead ratio. So this is another piece of advice. Make sure that you get the basics down before you start trying to do crazy designs. I'm sure you guys know my story already, but when I first started doing nails, I was able to do some very pretty nails. But did they last? Not at all. And why was this? I didn't know anything about prep. I didn't know anything about removing the dead skin off the cuticles. And I dang sure didn't know anything about picking up proper size beads and making sure the acrylic is not running completely off the nail so i am going to leave that down below because we do also talk about b ratio and i know it will be very helpful sometimes when i'm doing the acrylic application the color will come out just a little thin and to save me some money on acrylic powder especially on my cover colors that i use the most often i do like to encapsulate with clear but i did not encapsulate the whole nail i only use the clear acrylic to build the apex Moving on to my second piece of advice, you definitely want to make sure that you choose your clientele. If you're somebody that hasn't started doing nails yet, this is the perfect time to think about this. Just think about the type of clients you want, the type of nails you want to do, so that you know what you're getting into prior. Now, if you're somebody that's already started doing nails and you kind of do a little bit of everything, it's nothing wrong with sticking to one niche. I do feel like as nail techs, people kind of bug us to do everything and ask us, why we don't do this, why we don't do that. Look, it's your business. I do feel like in the past, I used to stress myself out. I guess you could say caring too much about wanting to have something to give to everybody. You can't service everybody. So I believe that it's best to know what you want to do. Now I'm pushing more toward doing nails like this, more luxury type nails. I'm really moving away from doing simpler sets. And I deeply appreciate my clients that do come to me and get simple sets, but I would like to do more dramatic sets. And I did recently make a post about this on Instagram and that's how I'm moving forward. Also, don't let clients pressure you into trying something that you've never done before. I've said this before, I'm gonna keep saying it, I'm gonna start screaming it. If you're not sure if you could do something, do not let the client be the test dummy. This is very risky, and this is something that I no longer do. And I'm saying this because, God forbid, you're in a scenario where your client asks you for something that you wasn't sure if you could do, you tried to do it, and now they don't want to pay for the service because they're not satisfied. And clients will sit there and be like, no, I know you could do it. I have faith in you. And if you don't deliver, they don't want to pay. So I just avoid that completely. I've definitely been in situations that I've told you guys about where I wasn't really too sure and I tried it and they either didn't like it or they later texted me and told me they didn't like it. So just to avoid that completely, I'm not going to try it. If you wanted something and you wasn't sure if I could do it or not, if you've never seen it on my page, especially if you've never seen it on my page, you have to ask before the appointment. Don't ask in the moment and now I'm sitting there wondering if I can or not and now I want to try and then you don't like it. So let's just protect ourselves, and if you're not sure, don't do it. 
So I'm not sure if y'all can see the application is looking great so far, but the pointer finger, unfortunately, was a little shorter than the rest of the nails. So I did have to go back and pretty much file all the nails down while I was filing and shaping because, of course, we don't need a shorter finger. But this does go into another piece of advice. If you see something is wrong with the nails, you need to fix it as soon as possible. Like, I know people don't like when their clients are like, can you fix this? Can you fix that? You won't really have to go through that if you already see what the problem is and you fix it before you say something. People will often see that something is wrong and ignore it because you don't want to go back and fix it. But you have to remember that this client in front of you is a potential long-term client that could possibly bring you hundreds of other people in your door. So you do want to make sure that you try to provide the best service to everybody so that you could keep your clients coming back. And I'm pretty sure that this is why I'm able to have a steady clientele. And it's because my loyal clients are consistently bragging about me and I deeply appreciate them. I do also have an ebook where I talk about multiple ways that you could build clientele. If you are interested in that, I will link it down below. And I'll also be leaving a code so you can save you some money. For the thumb application, I actually did not start off with such a large B, so I did have to apply some pressure to this nail to make sure that I got it all the way down to the free edge while still allowing the acrylic to be nice and even. So right now I'm about to pick up that second bead. This bead is going to be a little larger since my first bead was really thin. And I'm going to make sure that all of my acrylic powder is sidewall to sidewall before I start to bring the acrylic powder down. I really don't like when I have to go back and add more acrylic because I'm missing acrylic on like the sidewalls and the nail tip. So just to save yourself some time and prevent that, please make sure that it is touching both side walls before you start to blend it down now for the cuticle application i do feel like valentino's acrylic works really really well like it's very seamless if that makes sense like i feel like once i place it for the cuticle application it kind of just flows into the area without flooding too much i do feel like the cover colors are very easy to work with and i am currently turning the nail around and making sure that the acrylic powder is on both sides of the nail and then I'm gonna go in with my clear acrylic to build the apex. Moving on, I am going to start to seal the cuticle area and you want to be careful as you're doing this. The bit that I'm currently using that I'm going to link down below is not a safety bit. So you'll want to be careful. So I'll also link down below a safety bit if that's what you need. I do feel like over time you'll start to drift away from a safety bit. It's really not that hard to not cut your client as long as they're not moving. But you do want to do what is best for you and what's most comfortable. Now, my next piece of advice would be not to let your clients run over you. I've seen this before where nail techs will make posts saying that they've been too nice to their clients and their clients are pretty much just coming late, coming whatever time they want to, not properly booking, and the list goes on. So you do want to be nice, but also stand on what your rules are. Over the past couple years, I've got way better with doing this because I used to be scared to speak up myself. But now I just let them know, like, hey, respectfully, this isn't going to work. You do need to, you know, follow the rules. They're there for a reason. And I do like to run an organized business. So it's really all about the way you say it, the energy that comes off of you when you say it. It's really no need to argue with your clients or to get on social media and let everybody know that you've been too nice to people. I used to do this, too. I used to go on Instagram, like, you guys aren't showing up and you guys are always late. 
not everybody needs to know your business. You need to just personally talk to the clients that's doing it instead of making public service announcements. That's just my personal opinion because people are just going to know, hmm, well, she's saying that she's too nice, probably not going to change anything. So maybe I won't be on time next time. Like you just never know how people are thinking. So me personally, I prefer to keep these things off social media and I just talk to the client when they do it. Like, hey, you know, I'm going to let you come late this time, but next time we're going to have to reschedule and possibly there's going to be a fee. I just like that when my next client gets here, nobody's going to be in my chair and I make sure of it. There has not been many times where I've had clients still in my chair when the next one comes. And when that does happen, I get super stressed out and I'm not going to experience burnout and stress myself out due to clients that can't respect my rules. And this does go back to making sure that you're picking your clientele because unfortunately, I've had to block loyal clientele that was starting to disrespect my rules or get too comfortable. You know, I'll say it the first time, hey, this isn't going to work. Please be on time or please don't last minute cancel over and over again. And they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Please, I don't want to go to another nail tech. I'm begging you. And I'm like, all right, you know cool i'm glad you understand they book again they don't show up or they come extremely late so i'm gonna give you a warning and if after that that doesn't work for you you can't come back this is your business and you need to keep your mental state together so you can continue to run your business Right now, I am currently filing the side walls of these nails, and I'm also filing the surface of the nails to make sure that I get them as smooth as possible. When it comes to reshaping the nails, I do like to use the 80-80 grit hand file. I definitely feel like the more coarse file, of course, would be much faster. Get you a real nice and crispy shape, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Now, this next piece of advice was something that I had to learn myself too. It can be a little heartbreaking, but it is 100% true. You cannot always DM other nail techs thinking that they're going to give you any type of free information. And you can't be mad at them. When I first started doing nails, I too was messaging people, asking them how they keep their nails on, and asking them this and that. Not everybody has the free time to sit down and talk to somebody that they don't know at all and give them free information. I do appreciate all the ladies that's text me back when I was a beginner and was letting me know like, hey, you can do this, you can do that. I deeply appreciate that. And that's why I am a nail technician that does not mind texting people back and giving them advice if needed. There's definitely been times where I even messaged other nail techs asking them advice about maybe hand painted art building clientele, YouTube views, whatever it was, and I either didn't get a response, maybe they were busy, or who knows what the scenario was. I do want to also acknowledge the fact that we're not in competition. I mean, I'm not in competition, so you shouldn't be neither. When I see other nail techs works, other nail techs YouTube channel, I really get motivated. recently had a beginner nail tech reach out to me and ask me if it would be okay for her to do a very quick interview with me and I have responded back yes. Now the interview was probably not even 10 minutes long, very short, simple, sweet, and straight to the point. 
But prior to her doing the interview, she did let me know that she messaged a lot of other nail techs regarding the interview because it was for a college project and how nobody responded. And I was like, really? I was the only one to respond, which she probably didn't think I was going to respond just due to like followers, even though I really don't pay attention to follow count. I know a lot of people do, but this just goes back to me saying, you know, not everybody has to respond to you. People aren't going to feel the need to respond to you. They're going to be like, why do you think you can just get my free information? Which, like I said, I understand where people are coming from with that. But there's nothing wrong with being open and honest about things that you do. I'm not judging anybody that doesn't do that. But I'm letting y'all know that I am somebody that you could reach out to if needed. And people do it all the time. And I do not mind. Right now, the last thing I have to do is add the rhinestones and the pearls to the set. I am going to be using my Zule Bling Glue. I could have used my McCart Diamond Gel too. I do feel like for this type of set, both would work, but this is what I'm using today. Now, my last piece of advice I would have for you guys is to find other sources of income within the nail industry. Now, I do nails. I also do plenty of other things that also make me a cool amount of income that are also nail related. I do often have clients that ask me if nails are the only thing I do, which is kind of a funny question to me. And I'll say yes, because technically it is because my other incomes are also nail related. And this could include being a brand ambassador or trying out other people's products, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Like there's definitely plenty of other ways to monetize the work that you do as a nail technician. You should definitely not limit yourself to other things. So for the rhinestones on this set today, I do have to consistently add more nail glue just because I do want to make sure that these stick. So I need to make sure that the glue is at least a little wet before I apply the charms. I did get the pearls from Amazon and I got the crystals from Blue Street Crystal. Someone had asked me if I could link down below the crystals that I've purchased from Blue Streak. I do have a separate video where I talk about the different size crystals and which crystals that I buy. So I'll link that video below too. And y'all can let me know how y'all feel about that. Before I wrap this video up, I do want to once again thank you guys for tuning into my videos. I do it deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate it. And y'all let me know down below how y'all felt about the advice I gave y'all today. And if you are a more advanced nail tech, what advice do you have for beginners? Let me know down below and let me know what you guys would like to see next. I know we're still in spring. People have been saying they want to see more spring sets. So y'all can let me know what y'all want to do. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video.
So if you've recreated any sets that I've done, feel free to tag me in them. I do be sharing other people's work on my story if they tag me, just to show some love back because I do really appreciate it. And like I said, comment some white hearts down below and y'all let me know how y'all feel about this video and I'm going to see you in the next one.